That's pretty cool. He's making angles. Wow. What's going on everybody man? My name is Joe Vaughn and today I'm doing an animation versus geometry video. I am currently an electronics engineering grad student getting a master's degree and I also work in the defense industry working as an opto electronics engineer so I know a little bit about math and a little bit about engineering. Obviously too young I don't know everything. I hope this is an interesting one. Um, I did a few videos from Alex Becker make sure you guys check them out and yeah I'm not gonna waste any more time. Let's get into it. So it looks like he's breaking out of the x-axis, but I may be wrong. <laughs> I'm not really sure right now. That's pretty cool, he's making angles. If you guys don't know, like in quantum mechanics, like with photons, they all exhibit like a wave-like behavior and they actually follow a weird or a strange rule within geometry. It's called the Snell's Law. Um, reflect, well, it's not really technically geometry, but it's like reflection, refraction, follow Snell's Law. And we use aspects of geometry all the time when it comes to like interference and symmetry of how the photons move or how a mic like an interferometer move I mean works it's pretty cool how like he's showing like the basics or all the angles and stuff and the radians <laughs> but he's doing it in like a drawing like a drawing format that's pretty cool this looks like a theta like a theta Yeah, this looks like a theta. This little element right here. Well, I don't know if you guys can see it. I tried to screenshot it, but I'm recording. But it looks like a a weird little theta. pretty cool i love how he started with all the angles and then transitioned into like a triangle then a square then what is what is after that hexagon pentagon all those shapes basically shows how all shapes are intertwined or related to each other 
And it's also cool because when you're first learning about shapes, the first thing you learn about is angles. You learn about, oh, this this isosceles triangle has this angle, or this obtuse triangle has this angle, or an acute triangle has all all the angles combined, and then the square is this. It's like you, you just slowly morph into an infinite amount of sides. And that's what a circle is. That's basically where they're showing right now. They first started with a triangle, then they went to... Forgive me, everyone. I don't know if it's hexagon, pentagon, octagon. They they had sides on sides, and they kept making sides. And eventually, you got to a circle. That's what they're showing, because what is a circle? A circle is an object with infinite sides. That's all it is, if you want to be theoretical. Or it's a circle not necessarily with infinite sides. It could be an object with so many sides that it just looks smooth. It's pretty cool, right? <laughs> So what they just show now is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. It's one of the most, I guess, base level formulas that you need in geometry. So it shows the hypotenuse c of the triangle, blah, blah, blah. They all come together to make, um, a, what do they make? The areas, the areas of the triangle, that's what they make. It's been so long since I studied this, but it's just amazing because even with the work I do today, you're always going to need this type of stuff. Like you may not think you need it. When you're, I guess, making lasers or you're, or you're making simulations for lasers or you're making simulations on how, um, I guess, a fiber optic will carry the light because that's what I work with. But you're always going to gonna use it at some level. Even when you get to the higher levels of math or the higher levels of engineering and you look at, for example, calculus. What is calculus? When you're, calculus is the rate of change. But how do you measure change when it comes to optics and electronics you would have to use a little sense of geometry because that's what things are kind of mapped in when you're designing circuits and you want them to you want the light and the electrons to move through your circuit at this speed when you're designing them you're going to use certain aspects of calculus yes but you're really using geometry on a base base level I love, <laughs> I love how all his videos kind of obey like the laws of physics. That's pretty cool because all these are kind of, 
I know it looks it, it's fun, but they're all like really relative to even working in like the engineering industry. And I kind of wish, you know, I had access to this like when I was younger. Because this is a cool way to learn. This is a very, very cool way to learn. Imagine you learned the Pythagorean theorem using this type of video. This leads to like better ray tracing for like light waves and all that. So it definitely would have been pretty useful <laughs> to know. I don't even know what the big shape is that I'm looking at right now. guys noticed a lot of the structures that he used are triangles and that's like real life because triangles are like really rigid and they're extremely sturdy so they're even used in real life structures when it comes to building things so that's why you notice like a lot of his shapes that he's standing on or a lot of the things that are real sturdy in the videos are all made out of some variation of a triangle so that's pretty cool even <laughs> even if you kind of zoom outwards and another thing if this it's like a big shape on the screen and i don't want to go too detail too into detail because this is not my video that i'm reacting to but this is kind of how the earth will look well no that's not true all i'm saying is that everything is shown in circles circles are everywhere circles are part of life and they're represented everywhere but all of us all a circle is are infinite or a million thousand billion sides that's all of a circle is so when you're looking at this shape if we were to zoom out far enough it would probably look like a perfect circle but that's theoretical <laughs> I'm assuming I'm assuming that hold up what is that called it's not theta it's phi that's what it's called it's called phi phi is the golden ratio that's why everything keeps lighting up gold that's why I was wondering why everything was shiny gold and why he used that specific Greek Greek letter but that's what it is it's phi hmm that's pretty cool I never I haven't seen that in a while
Cowboy! That was pretty cool. Uh, I didn't even know a lot that was going on in this. I haven't done geometry in so long, but it was a really cool video. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. And let me know if you want me to see anything else. It is Jav E E N, and I will talk to you guys on the next one. Peace.